Double no scout, and then he just like didn't make probes there. For quite a while. Directly after previous match, we're just loading right on into the next one. Into the next best of five. It's gonna be Hurricane versus Impact. We are jumping on into it now. All right, I guess I should do the introductions anyway. We just watched him 3-0 classic like it was nothing. It's Hurricane. And in the top right hand side of the map, it's Impact. All right, we'll see what uh, we're gonna be having this game. Is it gonna be a forge? No, a gateway. The quick probe, just to keep an eye on that, on that cheeky, cheeky Zerg. I think something that we should all be excited about is the fact that I have a bunch of M&Ms. And uh, I'm excited to watch what I'm gonna guess if I had to say for this match. And the players. Come on, Copenhagen Doss. The impact of the hurricane will leave Zerg remains next to classic. You gotta be able to work Ragnarok in there some way too. That should be an easy one. But yeah, seeing as how this is on the old patch, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say we're gonna see some good old Swarm Host Nidus abuse. These Zergs are gonna be like, this is my last chance. I have to do it. I have to make some Nidus Swarm Host. And I said based on the players, it's uh, Impact and Ragnarok, who I'm pretty sure are decent users of it. Probe just scouting out. No significant scout yet. Interestingly, Twilight Council on the way for Hurricane pretty quickly. Adept is moving on in for Hurricane. Resonating Glaives will be the build. Hurricane lets his Adept finish, interestingly enough. Hidden probe, potentially for a pylon for adepts later on. Wait, this adept made it out? Are you nuts? Wow. Yeah, Korean player names are pretty good. Seeing as how it's a completely different language. The fact that they use English words for their username is really convenient. I don't know if StarCraft 2 would have caught on as much if we had to be learning Korean just to commentate. I probably wouldn't be commentating. Ooh, those M&Ms made me thirsty. Anyway, we have a Robo, and then uh, looks like a proxy gate from Hurricane. Gonna be a big counter all in. Or a big all-in. And the fact that there are Zerglings on the way for Hurricane, probably not a good idea. Based on the fact that you're going to be having Adepts shooting your way, probably not the best. Uh, some Adepts are moving across the map. Now, they're not in mass. I mean, Zerglings versus just Adepts can work out quite well if the Adepts are not clumped up. Uh, if, if Hurricane, though, gets good positioning, this is gonna really suck. 
and I mean really, really suck for uh, for impact. Now uh, these two adepts are being microed. Some adepts ran into another base, but I guess uh, they decided to pull back. Three drones go down so far. More adepts probably can be warped in. I think Hurricane should keep going with this, right? He's got a prism. It's pretty much just lings. You want to warp in more adepts, unless I'm mistaken. Lings for uh, impact are running all over the place, and he even made a roach horn, but he's not making any roaches. There's a ton of resonating glaive adepts just, just hanging around. Uh, there is spores already up. There's an overseer on the way, so her impact really expects some uh, roach shenanigans. Or really expects DTs, which is fair, because the Protoss is being passive after this and is still two bases, so they gotta go for something else, right? And why on earth is Hurricane not attacking in? These Adepts are gonna move on in, they're gonna shade on in towards the main, in, towards the main base, yeah, but they're gonna go down. Now we see the rest of the Adepts move into the natural, but like, he gave the Zerg players so, so, so much time to make things. Like, the Dark Shrine is gonna finish up, but it's been scouted. The Zerg player is going to be able to make Overseers, and I think if you're Impact, you just keep making Roaches and you don't lose. Yeah. Yeah, Copenhagen Doss. Thank God for, uh, for like the eight, for like the 19th century England doing their thing and the, spreading the gospel. Being a native uh, English speaker can really, really be uh, taken for granted. Hi, streamer. Could you show me when the match began? Classic versus Hurricane? Um... Well, it was a pretty quick one. So about 30 minutes ago? Or you can uh, go to my channel and probably click on the VOD and it'll tell you when I went live. Then subtract the time. That'll tell you. So these DT's not getting a lot done. I mean, uh, yeah. They have successfully convinced Impact that he doesn't need to go above 54 drones, though. And that is partially based on the fact that this is World of Sleepers and you get the rich Vespine gas. So in a sense, he's on uh, 57 drones, which doesn't seem as bad as 54. Now, well, we got a ton of Roaches and a ton of Ravagers coming on in. And Impact or Hurricane's gonna have to defend with Adepts and Disruptors and Immortals. Now, uh, the Immortals and the Disruptors are really going to be key here. Can he get out the big the big hit? Oh, that was a pretty big one. Some roaches went flying. Now, Force Fields are getting tossed down to cover the retreat. Another Disruptor shot goes out. And wow, are, am, am I crazy or am I seeing Disruptors get used against Zerg? DTs are in the mix. Now, they're not going to be helping out too much based on the fact that there's an Overseer. Units are being pulled back. The Zerg player is still pressing forward, but the Overseer is a little bit too far back, so these DTs doing work, and another big Disruptor shot goes off. However, the Lings in the natural base, they were uncontested, and they got too much work done. More Zealots are being warped on in to help out. I think uh, the Disruptors could maybe get off one more shot, but this is a dead Protoss. Make no mistake. There are Disruptors, but there is not a dream. GG gets called. I see Wilbert Go oh, followed. Thank you for the follow, sir. Micro wasn't good enough. No, it was not. Uh, the fact that he sat there with his resonating glaive adepts for so long was not good enough either, I don't think. That was a party foul. We're gonna load on into the next game now. Thanks so much to everyone for tuning on in. Impact versus Hurricane, the next match. Chionat, type in that exclamation mark, caster. That is, uh, that's the one.
right there. You want to check out that YouTube channel. It's got some pretty good StarCraft 2 videos on it, dare I say. Might be a little biased, but dare I say, they're pretty good. In fact, I'll probably do an Alpha Star video after, after streaming or whatever. We'll see, what time is it? Uh, I don't want to be doing a commentary too late or else my neighbors will hate me. Anyway, here we are, up in the top left-hand side of the map. It's Impact. And in the bottom right-hand side of the map, it's Hurricane. Rock you like a hurricane. So, we've got our players introduced. Impact with a big old roach attack. Very Impact style. He made a big impact there. Ho oh, ho ho, Copenhagen Doss isn't the only one who can make the puns around here. Sounds like my neighbors are doing parkour upstairs. Oh man, if I was one of those up-to-date Twitch streamers, I'd ask a poll right now. I'd be like, do you want a face cam? While commentating. But I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Because most of you guys, whether I, whether I like to pretend I'm funny or not, I think most of you guys are here for the StarCraft. Based on the fact that there's 65 of you, and like three of you chatting. So that means that the, that the other 62 of you don't, uh, are really just here for the StarCraft. Let me know if you're here in chat, though. If you're enjoying the games. A uh, proxy pylon for Hurricane. Is this going to be the world's fastest Twilight Council? Or is it going to be a Stargate? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Pun is the way of life, says Copenhagen Doss. Anyway, we've got the Adept, the Warp Gate on the way, so Hurricane's hiding this pylon, yes. But he is not rushing attack. Well, we're all Hydras, but most of us have morphed into Lurkers. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Copenhagen us. What are we gonna do with you, buddy? Metabolic boost on the way here for the Zerg. Third base on the way up. Now, is this Stargate gonna catch him off guard? I mean, it's not even the quickest Stargate you can do. It's not even that close. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but if the Stargate was built here, because the maps are the same size, right? Like vertically as they are horizontally, or maybe they're a bit more tall vertically. But, like, the distance from here to here is pretty similar to the distance of, like, it was a Stargate here to here. It's the element of surprise, yes. But when a Zerg is surprised, you're like, oh, it's gonna be DTs or Oracles. So really, the reason you proxy a Stargate in the first place is you're like, well, I want it to get there as quick as possible. So before this spore crawler is done, the oracle should be there, but it's not. And instead, he's gonna build two oracles, one hidden that hidden corner. So while going for the super rush is an option, uh, the Zerg player can always be caught off guard. But no, he's gonna scout out because he's like, "What are you doing? Uh, does he spot it? No, he doesn't." And all of a sudden, this is the moment in which Impact didn't know that he fucked up. But in reality, he did. Avoid Ray! Hurricane, are you on glue? No, I actually think the Void Ray is a really good choice. Roaches, pretty darn good. Someone like Impact, probably known to make roaches now and then. Now, uh, the fact that these oracles has been, have been spotted is unbeknownst to Hurricane. So he's going to run headfirst into a ton of queens. These oracles come on in, but they are actually going to get some good damage. Done five drones. The na spore at the natural ain't done yet. So one more. Oh, I think he could have got one more. But no, he's just going to go to the third. Oh, got to be careful. Oh, he loses one of the oracles. No, he was so close. Seven drones. Not bad. Not. Hold on. What was that quote from Chernobyl? Not great. Not terrible either. And so, Hurricane, 
pulls out the old Protoss book of options and goes for a ton of gateways. Do you guys remember the days when Protoss could just do anything and win the game? Because no one had... The game hadn't been refined as much. Now every build and players are so good at cutting corners and being optimal with, like, their droning and everything else. Now, uh... Now, like, you can't kind of just, like, yeet up a bunch of gate or build a bunch of gateways and then yeet across the map. In the past, you could. And Protoss would have a decent chance at winning. Now it seems like those kind of YOLO plays don't work as well. Mainly because Zerg's got so good at droning up, and you can't just let him be at all. So you actually have to get really good damage done early on. We have GSLTY, who I'm 99% sure isn't the real TY. I can't remember what TY's Twitch channel is, though. Probably Splice TY, I think. Except Splice rebranded, didn't they? Uh, Void Drag gonna find itself an Overseer. That's actually a nice find to keep the Zerg in the dark, but the problem is Overseers are cheap. And really, really hard to stop for how good they are at scouting. Believe it or not, like, if a Zerg wants to scout you, they're scouting you. I mean, his name is GSLTY. It could be RealTY. If someone comes into this chat with the username RealTY, then I'll be like, oh, well, this has to be the real TY. Um, we've got a Protoss player who is building Charge and Colossus against... Drumroll, please. Eight Mutalisk. And the amount of games I've seen lately in which a Protoss player wins versus Mutas... Not that many. Protoss have just been getting canned by Zergs lately. Every cho The thing about Zerg lately is that every choice the Zerg seems to make is usually a good one. It tends to work out. You know those people that, you know those people that just cruise through life? Or that's what it seems like anyway. All, all memes aside. Well, this is a meme. But, uh... You know, everyone knows that guy in life who just cruises through, you know, like, gets himself a pretty nice car, an attractive girlfriend, and then, uh, gets himself a pretty nice car, an attractive girlfriend, everything comes easy to him, just... Everyone knows one of those guys in life. And, uh... And who just has, like, a really good life for minimal effort and everything, and everyone's like, wow, that guy's got it good, you know? I, how is it for things just to work out for you? Or is Impact like, well, I guess I'll build a Spire, and if that doesn't work out, uh, then I'll just stick to my Road to Ravager. And that's how it goes for Zerg, usually. And, I mean, Hurricane didn't take ter- I mean, the damage he took was, well, once again, not great. Not terrible, either. I should see how many times I can use that quote in a cast. Not great, not terrible, either. Uh, he lost nine probes. Which, as I said, not great, not terrible either. I do like the fact that he's getting up a fourth base. And, I mean, he is building himself one thick army. He's getting plus two, but the problem is the Zerg player just made 28 Banelings. Ah, <laughs> uh, the Phoenix that are, were made in order to kill the Mutas. <laughs> Guys, we're about to see her in this get, this get shit on. Okay, a bunch of Lings get into his natural days. Uh, even though they have no HP, they get a few probes. The Protoss player has been pulled out of position, and this is 28 damage. I don't believe there's Psy Storm. There are sentries, though, so there can be some force fields. Corrosive Vile getting tossed down. Actually kills one of the Phoenix, not bad. Pretty good. Actually, really good. Killing Phoenix with Corrosive Vials, not, not an easy task. Okay, Baneling's gonna go ahead and just crash on into everything. They're usually pretty efficient. And the Zerg player, still just making stuff. Still just making stuff. 
The Protoss player has held on to his fourth base, though. Stargate's still powered. That's a testament to his skill. But boy, is he ever not prepared for this attack. The Zealot Warpin is pretty clutch. A recall actually gets used in order to react to this. But oh no, Baneling! They find their way to the to the natural, or the third base, pardon me. And we see 10 probes go down. The mining has really been disrupted. And the Zerg player is on the retreat. And so far, just seems to be trading pretty good. Prozabal going down. I mean, I mean, the Zerg is losing a fair bit of stuff. Impact kind of has just been given it, but he is getting chased back here. He's losing a lot of units. He's making Lings versus Triple Colossus and Archons. I think he should be leaning a bit heavier on the Roaches, personally, but as he fires up 20 Banelings, I'm like, huh, maybe this is going to work out after all. He makes more Ravagers to spam that Corrosive Bile. All right, we take a look here. Oh, Disruptor Shot goes off, hits some of the Ravagers, but in come the Banelings. All of a sudden, the Protoss player has to step back, but it's pretty tough to do so in time, although the Banes didn't actually connect with the Colossus. Whoa, Hurricane Winds. And now I look like a jerk for memeing on how Zerg can be... I mean, that was actually... Did did Hur Hurricane played well? He definitely did. Um, He responded to the aggression pretty appropriately. But, ra but uh, Impact kind of threw away a lot of units there. He threw away a lot of stuff. GG, well played by Hurricane. We might not have a ZVZ Finals. All right. Into the next game. What about match classic versus hurricane? Well, I'm just here to cast some StarCraft. But the results were 3-0 for hurricane. Hmm. That makes you think. That makes you think, don't it? Pretty big upset. Anyway, here we are in the top left-hand side of the map. It's Impact. And in the top bottom right-hand side of the map, it's Hurricane. I really didn't expect him to win that one. I thought the Zerg was just going to meme on him. How many drones did Impact have as that was going on? I feel as if he had 10 more drones, he could have just made endless stuff. Probe Scout coming in. And she goes. All right, Overlord crossing the map. Probe E runs on in. Third base on the way for the Zerg. Man, I want to play some StarCraft after this. We're definitely doing some ladder. If it, assuming that these series don't go super long. I mean, that last game was a good one. So I'd be fine with them all being that long. I'm going to play some ladder after this. I mean, it's not that late. I'll head to bed pretty early. Catching up on sleep's important. The sad part is I really do have to do an Alpha Star video before before this, before I go to bed. Because uh, it's been a day since I did a YouTube video. And uh, I'm actually kind of worried that my YouTube channel is just going to die. That the YouTube algorithm gods are going to be like, he didn't put out a video for a day. He's dead to us.
I do wish that I could commentate just like uh, any StarCraft 2 and get the same amount of views as they do for Alpha Star. That'd be nice. That would be pretty good. Adapt Shades into the main base of Impact. Triple Queen production on the way here for the Zerg. And we'll see what Hurricane's gonna go for. I mean, I've liked his- I mean, I've liked his variety of builds so far. I have enjoyed them thoroughly. A second Adept joins on up. An Oracle on the way. Here we go. In goes those two Adepts. Shade not in. There's a drone at the third base. It just turns itself into a sport. It's like I'm having none of it. These two Adepts actually complete their Shade, which is pretty bold. Get themselves one Link. They're shading out. Let's see how many drones can they target down. Looks like they get one, maybe a second. This is actually looking really nice for the Protoss. Three drones in total. Meanwhile, the Oracle moves on in. More drones going down. The Adept's gonna help take out this Queen. Dude, does it die? The Adept can get it. Get her, get her. Frisbee, yes, the Queen dies to the Frisbees. Five drones in total. A Queen as well. There's one Adept, gets another drone. Six drones for two Adepts. And a Queen. That's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. I'm really enjoying Hurricane's play. This seems to be the Hurricane that uh, that I was like a fan of like two, three years ago when he was kind of up and coming at first. If we see more of this Hurricane, I'm, I'm going to be excited. Honestly, I just haven't been able to watch enough StarCraft 2. Makes me sad. There was a time which I would not miss like any match of StarCraft 2 when I was awake. It was it was nice. I need to get a job which I can just like kick my feet back up and get paid to do nothing. One of those jobs. That would be awesome. I'm a fan of the more aggressive players. I think the more aggressive players are fun to watch at times when they're like really smart with their aggression. As a hurricane is being right now. But when there's like players that are just aggressive, kind of just like they roll the dice like every single game, they're like, okay, I'm going to attack now because that's what I do. Not that I've really thought this through to a huge extent. That's uh, that's the kind of player which I am not a fan of, because it's it's the worst way to play in my opinion. Poorly thought out aggression is much worse, I think, than okay macro. Four drones go down at the cost of one of the oracles. I think that's okay to hamper the zerg that way. We take a look. The protoss player is still powering on up. Uh. A hurricane has actually gone up to eight gateways and he hasn't made any other tech. This kind of makes me worried that he's just going to go for a big old gateway unit attack, and I think he is. And as the Zerg player is going into an infestation pit, firing up a fourth base, plus one, Cleo re reconstitution, and not a ton of units on the way, I'm getting a bit concerned right now. Uh, hurricane, though, isn't out on the map, so he's not attacking. I really do think if he was going for an attack right now, look at the army supply. Look at the lack of Zerg. I think if he was, say, attacking, like, he could have been attacking, like, 10 seconds ago. He's moving out now. I think, uh, I think he's still got a really good potential for this attack to work. Alright, Stalker's coming on in, pushing towards this fourth base. There's no upgrades on these gateway units. It's just mass Stalker sentry with one immortal in the mix. Uh, force field starting to go down. Zerg player has his fourth base cancelled. Now, this is a very good map to attack on for the Protoss because the Zerg is really bogged up, but the Protoss' force field's really working against him here. Eats a Kurosaba, loses a Stalker. 
Force Field's getting tossed down. Hurricane is eating some of the Corrosive Files to the base. He's got a good number of units, so I think another Warpin is definitely going to be due here. And there it is. More Stalkers joining into the front. The Force Fields have been pretty good. The Zerg has a Ravager base, though, so still standing at the back. You really want to be picking those off as the Protoss. That's when the Snowball really starts. The Stalker count is pretty high, but I don't know if it's high enough to start taking down all these Zerg units. The Void Ray is in the mix, even helping out. It engages the Queen, but a Spore Crawler comes forward to help out, and the Protoss army is thinning out. The Zerg player retreats for now, and I think the Protoss could be forced back. As I say that, though, another big Warpin comes on in, and the Zerg really has thinned out. Supply, though, still favors the Zerg. Plus one attack for the Zerg, making his units deal extra damage to these just ordinary gateway units. Zealots have been warped in, but there is simply so much Zerg here. The drones are getting pulled off the line, and I think Hurricane's attack is going to fail. Good pickup on the Stalkers. He's microing them with the Prism, but there's simply not enough damage output here, and the units are too fragile for the Protoss, and so Impact is going to hold this attack. Immediately, we see a counter Nidus go up. Hurricane's going to try and macro out of this, but the Nidus call to follow up this attack is a really beautiful one from Impact. And uh, I think this is going to make things very scary for Hurricane. Right now, he's just getting up Zealots, he's getting up Sentries, but he's going to have to hold on, and his charge is not yet done. The Zerg player is going to have a Nidus. He already starts his plus two, so he's going to be keeping his upgrade lead going. And uh, with this attack failing, Hurricane is in a very dire spot this game. Swarm Host actually on the way for the Zerg player, so Impact does want to use this Nidus Swarm Host composition. I think he actually could have just gone for a big Roach all and maybe won the game outright. Instead, he's going to try and uh, nickel and dime his opponent a little bit with these Locust Waves. And uh, I think both are very good responses. I would have expected the big attack just from the way the game played out. But still, the choice to just macro up going to Nidus Swarm Host really shows his confidence in this style. We'll probably be seeing a Nidus get called in here relatively soon. A big Zealot working in the main base. There was a Prism, but that was picked off. The Nidus Worm getting uh, summoned here. And that's where trouble's really going to start for the Protoss player. Just if a wave gets off once, that's, uh, that's a very big ouchie for the Protoss. I mean, all it takes is one wave of Locust and you got yourself a dead Nexus. Uh, Zealots have spotted this, but not in time. The wave of Locust gets called out. They are not, I repeat, not going to attack that one Zealot. And all of a sudden, anything in this main base is going to be in a lot of trouble. Zealots are going to try and handle this. The Locust land, they're going to focus down the cannon. They're going to start picking off these Zealots and already getting their value. They're actually focusing uh, not really anything as they deal damage to the Nexus. They deal damage to the Templar Archives. And uh, they don't actually get any major kills there. So, so far that wave's okay for Hurricane, but uh, they usually are bound to get efficiency at some point. And we do see the Zerg player just going in for a big attack as the Protoss was trying to pick up the side door. As the Protoss was worried about multi-pronged attacks, there's now just coming in a big wave of Zerg, and there is not going to be enough to stop this. The Protoss player is going to fold, and Impact is going to take himself the 2-1 lead as Hurricane GG's. Corey Gill says, I can't connect to MCP. I don't know if the server is down. The server is indeed offline for a little bit. Something's going to happen with that at some point. What, uh, what a fun game, though. Well, well played indeed. Here we are. We're going to get into the next oh! game. Oh, Corey Gill has subscribed for his third month in a row. What a god. Thank you so much, Corey Gill. Map reset? Not yet. Not yet. The Minecraft memes may continue at some point, though. I'm just so busy. I'm starting a new job tomorrow. Uh, like, so I have no time. Ah, uh, hey, 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 hey. All right, anyway, here we are. As this best of five continues on, in the top left-hand side of the map, it is Hurricane. And in the bottom right-hand side of the map, it is Impact. He's just got to win one more to go face Ragnarok in his ZVZ Finals. And I think that really would be a toss-up, Ragnarok versus Impact. Uh, the main reason is... Uh, Impact and Ragnarok, in my mind, are actually very similar Zerg players. I think they're both a little bit more on the aggressive side. 
they're both not perfect players in a sense. They're both they both can show very good high skill ceiling, but I feel like we will have a scrappy ZBZ if that is the case. Yeah, make sure to press that follow button though if you're enjoying this uh, commentary. It's just some nice casual late night StarCraft. I guess for you East Coasters anyway. And then, uh, yeah. So if you're enjoying that, press that like button. And of course, or press the follow button. Check me out on YouTube and whatnot. And then stay tuned after these games because that's when I'm going to go ladder. And uh, ladder, I will. I think I'm going to play some Protoss. I think I will. I think I will. My category is Brood War, not StarCraft 2. I thought they were one and the same these days. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, I am just under StarCraft. Ah! Ay, 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 ay! Mamma mia! Alright, there we go. I honestly thought they just merged the categories. They merged all the StarCraft 2 ones, though. That's my bad. I should have noticed. I noticed the icon was different, but I was like, yeah, StarCraft is StarCraft. That really isn't the case. Thank you for the heads up, Sir Prex. I appreciate it. Maybe now we'll get uh, some more viewers in here. Numatized Carapace on the way for impact, so he wants to know what's coming his way. Which I think is a pretty good choice on a map like Thunderbird. Uh, and the reason for that is that your opponent can really go two extremes, but usually the macro one is uh, more common. So I really understand the logic of, like, I really want to know if this guy's macroing or what. I really understand that. And all of a sudden, this Overlord is going to be a, like, Lightning McQueen and just zoom over this base. Protoss wants to hide something? Too bad. Too, too bad. <laughs> I, I updated it already, Cory. He was right. I was in the wrong category. Hurricane commits on in with these two adepts again. This Zerg actually doesn't have much to stop this. So he's going to take some damage. Another drone going down. Is this a normal thing? I feel like this is something that should not be happening in ZVZ. Or in a PVZ for the Zerg. Uh, looks like uh, Impact going to run his drones. The Oracle coming on in. It runs into the Queens, though. There's spores in every base. And uh, right now, if you are Hurricane, that's a bit rough. The adepts dying sucks. Basically, the damage he got done with the two Adepts is the damage that you'd expect him to get done just with, like, the Oracle. But instead, it cost him two Adepts. Avoid Ray being out again is nice. I really like the choice versus the Mass Roach. Ling's heading towards the third base zone since this is not an Oracle. Uh, they will still be pushed back, though. Not enough Ling's. And there is an oracle out still. Robo facility on the way here. Meanwhile, this void will kill off that overlord. Oracle gonna work away on these lings. Another Oracle on the way, plus one on the way. Hurricane is just macroing up the scape. We'll see how much he can drone, as so is Impact. And uh, this could be one of the later games, as uh, Thunderbird really does lead into them. I mean, it's incredibly easy to stay alive on three bases. Incredibly easy. And interestingly enough, we're going to see a Hydra Den on the way from Impact. Hmm. 
I'm guessing the long-term plan is Lurkers. I wouldn't mind seeing Lurker knight us. Hurricane moves in with the Oracle, picks off a few drones. Gonna lose one? Not quite. Nice. Nice uh, call there. Ever so close. Keeps that Oracle ticking. Disruptor Den. Disruptor Den. Dis I could see Disruptors living in a den. den. Kind of burrowing like a badger. Yeah, Disrupt. I, I honestly miss the Legacy of the Void days with PVZ wasn't as, uh, I guess, explosive as it was, and we'd have, like, those passive situations with the lurkers, and, uh, with the lurkers and, uh, the disruptors, and there'd be, like, that dance, but then Zerg got, like, the lurker adaptive talents, and they basically just became speed, and it kind of ruined the whole disruptor lurker thing. Which I think is a bummer. New race, infested Protoss. Huh. What would a Zerg Disruptor do? I guess it would probably just be like a fungal, right? It would like explode in a fungal. A fungal that you could aim, that would be weird. Uh, Oracles move on in. One of them dies. Uh, he's like, ah, I gotta do something on this mission, so he tosses down a revelation. Sees the Nidus network, which is nice, but I mean, Hurricane's actually going for a big attack right now. This seems to be a little bit, uh, odd, the fact that there's no Prism with this attack just yet. And that's because there actually simply isn't Prism. He invested in making two Colossus. Really, that was just a poke, though. He breaks down the rocks. Now he's pulling back with his units, trying to get up a fourth base. Goes into double disruptor. I'd like to see a cannon like here and here. Because there's going to be Nidus's coming on in. And as the Protoss, you really got to sniff that out and be ready for it. Uh, looks like there's a skirmish going on at the front. Stalkers pick off an Overseer. Another Overseer is in this position though. Pro this is the thing. Vision is so cheap. Nidus is like such a pain to deal with. Colossus, pretty good. They do have uh, the plus one attack. Once they have the plus two, they'll begin dealing even more damage to the Zerg army. For now, though, they're doing okay. This is a lot of Zerg, though, but a Disruptor moves out. Good dodge, though, from Impact. All the while, a Knight is in the main base, and all it takes is a couple Lurkers to really mess your day up as the Protoss. Supply, okay for the Protoss player, though. He retreats to his cannon to help himself out a little bit. Pulls back from the Lurkers, though, because there's simply such an army. The Knight is in the main gets shut down. That's very important. The Lurkers are still encroaching. One Disruptor pops out. It's going to get volleyed down. Another Disruptor pops out, though. Gets a huge shot on those Lurkers. Very important, softening them up. Another one goes out. So many dead Lurkers. They're really softening up the Zerg army, but there's still a lot of the swarm here. Roaches step forward. They're trying to focus down Colossus. One of them falls. The other is getting saved. Microed in that prism. But for now, the Protoss has dropped in supply. Another Nidus gets called into the main base, and as the Protoss has pulled his uh, defending units from the main, that could potentially get off here. The fourth base is about to fall for the Protoss, so even if he knocks down the Zerg army, he's already taken damage. That Nidus in the main will be shut down. The Zerg army will be forced back, but the fourth base has fallen, and uh, that really does hurt the Protoss. What a push coming from Impact, just wanting to close this series out with a 3-1. Plus 3 is on the way for the Protoss. Hurricane is uh, kind of being unhindered by this. He's just proceeding forward. He says, right, you didn't kill me, so I'm going to keep fighting. He's got out a good number of Disruptors, and I mean a very good number of Disruptors here. His fourth base gets cancelled once again. He's still defending the Nidus's, though. Another one going to get queued up, of course, though. They are... Nidus's are relentless. You gotta build, like, a cannon or something just to, just to shut those down for good. Uh, we take a look here. Ravagers. Roaches. 
And then a lot of Disruptors and Colossus, a couple of Immortals coming out. So uh, the Protoss player does have a pretty scary army. Great Novas go out for Hurricane, and he's actually getting disgusting shots off, getting a lot of value there, hitting so many units, really whittling down the Zerg army. That's actually just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Nidus, or beautiful Disruptor play, pardon me. The Zerg army isn't so scary, but still enough to uh, keep him at bay with those Lurkers. The Disruptors could go for shots here. One shot's gonna go out. It's gonna pursue some of those units. Actually kills a few Zealots with friendly fire. The Lurkers really do need to be cleaned up, and so far they really have been. There's only one left on the right side. The Protoss player, though, hasn't been able to break out, so he is still stuck on his three bases. He wants to move out. He will force the Zerg back, and the supply is actually pretty darn close right now, and that usually favors the Protoss. Plus two attack will finish for the Zerg, though, which is going to help out, but I mean, the Disruptor shots have been pretty good. There's a big Zealot counterattack coming from Hurricane, getting a lot of value with those Zealots. They're now heading towards the third base, and uh, Hurricane is surviving even though he lost his fourth base he's keeping this game going he hasn't been contained too long he gets it with his prism which is nice and uh, the zerg player is on quite is not on a great economy so he can't afford to keep throwing away units because he has this overwhelming mass he doesn't so he's gonna have to be very careful about his next engagement and i think the protoss army is better here as uh, we take a look i mean there's Disruptors out, there's going to be Psystorm. I really wouldn't mind another Colossus or two if uh, Hurricane can uh, afford it. I know he's spending a lot of gas on Templar and things at the minute, but even just one more Colossus in this army adds so much more passive damage, it really does help out. Disruptor count pretty high though, how many are we looking at here? Six Disruptors, that is a lot of potential damage. We see the Zerg player wanting to come in again from another angle, but a direct attack is not going to cut it. He's just going to clump up too much and eat those Disruptor shots. We see one dead lurker already. A Nidus gets called into the main. We see the Zerg just trying to Nidus everywhere desperately, but it looks like one that hasn't been scouted is finally going to get off here so far anyway. I mean, lurkers are dying to these Disruptors as this is going on, but all it takes is one big Nidus attack and a base can be compromised. Zerg is going to start pouring out of this location. The third is now under fire of the Protoss. Psystorm goes down as the Protoss player retreats, but now he's exposed at his fourth. The entire Zerg army has come forward, though. Lurkers are going to burrow. This third is under fire. Probes are dying. Disruptor shots are going out, but the Protoss wants to deal with this quickly. He's getting some good connections off, but so far nothing massive. Psystorm's going out. The losses are being taken here from both sides, but it seems the Zerg is getting his damage done as the fourth, or as the third of the Protoss falls. 17 probes with it. And uh, the Zerg player remaxing, making a lot more roaches, a lot more hydras. And we see all it takes is that one Nidus to get off, and the Zerg pours out. And the Protoss has a real bad time. Adaptive Talon's now on the way for the Zerg. A fifth base has been secured for the Zerg. And now we take a look here. Lurkers have pushed forward. The fourth base has been exposed. The Protoss was busy trying to deal just with a uh, with that attack at his third base and was still out of position. And then we take a look here. Disruptors getting tossed out everywhere to try and force this Zerg back. But still the trades seem to be okay for the Zerg and that's really what he needs. He's uh, cleaning out some of the Protoss army. The Protoss has lost a lot of units, a lot of economy here. And the Protoss is still being forced back. I think he should be able to break out of this, but he lost his Observer. So he can't clean up the Lurkers. He's making more. It means his Disruptors are trying to handle them and they will end up forcing the Zerg back. But that still is very, very painful. If you take a look here, the Protoss player might just counterattack or is going to pull back. Yeah, he still has that fourth base, so he will pull back. I mean, uh, the Zerg player has lost a lot of supply. Double Nidus at the front, guarded by one Lurker here. That's a tall order for the guy, so he will die. Uh... The Nidus has died, the Protoss is going to move on out. The Zerg player has had time to rebuild up some of his army, though. He's now in the lead for supply. The Lurkers really are valuable when it comes to defending here. The, the Protoss really fears them as they put out so, so much damage. The Lurkers also have adaptive talons now, making them so, so much more quick at repositioning. The Protoss player, they're looking to push forward before the Zerg is ready. 
And the reason for that is a ton of the roaches are busy in a counterattack, so we're heading into a bit of a base race right now. I'm not sure how exactly this is going to play out. There isn't a ton at home to defend for the Zerg. I think you've got to try and get up some more lurkers back at home, just in, the, just in a panic if you're impact right now, as uh, they really are what will keep a Protoss army at bay. For now, though, the Protoss does seem to have the superior force. The Zerg is hesitating a little bit. He's running away with his Roaches back into his Nidus. That means he's going to try and take on the main army. The Roaches are coming out. I think this is going to go okay for the Protoss, though, as the Protoss surges and supply disruptor shots getting off and dealing massive, massive damage. And the Zerg army is going to thin out, and Hurricane is going to tie the series up. Two to two. Wow, what a comeback from Hurricane there. Uh, really under pressure, but still keeping uh, keeping the dream alive. I see Core Cheese. Cor yeah, Core Cheese has followed the channel. Thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, what a great PvZ between those two players. I am going to get us into the next game in just a second here. Wow, what a game indeed. That was that was a good one. A great match from Hurricane. Uh, I really have been liking his play here today. Seems to be showing good stuff. And uh, we'll see if he can uh, take it. I'm honestly cheering for him. As I want to see him take on another Zerg after this one. Either way though, the winner will move on to face Ragnarok. The series is tied up 2-2. Two up in the top left-hand side of the map. It's slipping away from him. It's impact. And in the bottom right-hand side of the map, he represents Brave Star Gaming. He's a Korean Protoss player. And he's a hurricane. Rocking impact like a hurricane. Scorpions. Scorpion would be a cool uh, pro gamer name. All right, that's my new one. If I ever go pro and decide to rebrand, I'm becoming I'm becoming Scorpion. It's just so comically bad. But imagine this Korean nerd pro gamer who has the name Scorpion. This truly would be the greatest timeline. was the score between Classic and Hurricane? Hurricane 3 0 Classic. Scorpio in games. The game's Scorpion. Alright, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna forget about that one. I'll write it down. Uh, pretty normal build here. Hmm. I really do like Hurricane's confidence when he approaches the matchup. Like, he's not going for anything too gimmicky, and that really was just a macro game from him. And he won out. He really just reacted to what Impact was doing. Which I think is I think it's a curious subject. Because if he was playing against Serral, Serral arguably might have just macroed up Maiden Festers, and then Hurricane would have been like, well darn, I'm dead. But someone like Impact just kept throwing away into his opponent, and then eventually he threw away so hard he lost the game. So, yeah. Ling's out on the map, though. 
Oh, what's there to defend here? An Oracle on the way, an Adept is out. This is actually a few, a few links. Could be tricky here. Speed is about to be done. All right, Wall does get up the Oh, beautiful play from Perkin. Not getting caught off guard by nothing sneaky. He says, don't you dare try and pull a fast one on me. Shem Link left to follow, and so did Blue Blutimagai. Blue Timagi. Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough name to pronounce. Thanks for the follow, though. Oracle moving out onto the map. We'll see what it's able to get done. I'm guessing that. Uh, Oh, uh, there's a spore out, so it shouldn't be too much. It heads to the main. There's a queen and a spore. Enough to defend three queens and just no drones to kill, so good defense so far. Uh, looks like one drone goes down. I do like the Void Ray follow-up from Hurricane. I'm actually really enjoying the play from Hurricane. Oh, these Adepts could be in trouble, though. Not enjoying that. Oh, Hurricane. The one Adept abandons his friend. Gets him to a pretty good spot, though. Oh, beautiful spot, actually. And Link, those Lings. And two more buds show up to help out. Yeah, like, uh... I'm really enjoying how Hurricane's playing. He's just kind of opening up pretty macro. He's like, right... I'll go for the light pressure with the Stargate and everything. Keep the Zerg honest. Then he goes for the Void Ray to make sure he doesn't die to roaches so he can hunt down... So then he can hunt down his, uh... His overlords. So then he can kill off uh, any roaches that move across the map. Protect from that. And then he just seems to go into a robo. So this is just honest macro from Hurricane, which I'm really enjoying. Ray picks off a link. One overlord has been picked off. Another is about to be picked off, too. Looks like one of the oracles did die, though. Oh, and oh, this void... This, this is a lucky overlord. Staying alive. The void wasn't able to find it. Immortal on the way, Twilight on the way. So far, I don't believe the Spire has been scouted. No, it hasn't. Uh, I mean, there's sentries out, but no hallucinated Phoenix have been sent out to spot the fact that it's going to be Mutas once again. There's a hallucinated Phoenix moving out, but I don't know if it's going to spot it or not. And even if they do, will it be in time? There's one cannon starting at the third, but nothing else to defend versus the Mutas that are going to be incoming. And they're going to be coming real soon, and this her this phoenix isn't going to spot him. It's going to be close. Uh, flying behind the base, does it spot the spire? Uh, uh, okay, I mean, he knows now, and he's going to know sooner or later. The mutas, though, they're starting to rally across the map. The flock is heading out, and Hurricane, while he has been macroing, he seems not to have, uh, not to have had an adequate scout this game. So the Zerg player could catch him off guard. We could see some pretty big damage, and... He's not at a stage which he can absorb a ton of damage. He does have a Phoenix out. He does have Stalkers out. It seems he just had the magic amount to defend there as he takes no damage so far. He's got Sentries. He's got Stalkers. Another Phoenix comes forward. So far, the losses have been minimal enough that Hurricane is just doing fine. He's researching his Blink. Now, he does have to be careful. There's Roaches and Lings that are heading towards his third, but, I mean, he does have Cannons there. He's going to be able to shut this down. The Colossus getting volleys off. Frying up some of them Lings. There's Stalkers out. Blink isn't done yet, but it will be done relatively soon, and so far, things actually work out pretty darn well for Hurricane. Very, very impressive from the Protoss player. I was worried he wasn't scouting this in time. Now, he is also worried that it's going to be more so, uh, or more of the Muta. 
but it actually is just going to be a big Ravager, a Roach Ravager attack. I mean, his army is pretty decent, though. The sentries are getting focused down by the Mutas. A bold play from the Zerg. The Zerg player says, right, those sentries really are a lot of the power in your army. Gateways are going down, though. Phoenix coming in to help out. They're going to help deal with the Mutas. There's a good number of Ravagers out, but it's not that much Zerg. I feel there's enough Protoss here to repel this. A lot of the Zerg is rallying across the map in the Queens, in the Roaches, in the Ravagers. This is a complete all-in. I mean, there's Immortals and Stalkers still standing strong. They're retreating to the shield batteries right now. The Zerg is trying to focus down those high-tech units. So far, only one of the Immortals has fallen. The Colossus is alive in the back, dealing damage. The Immortals are still alive. The Protoss player is having a pretty good hold so far. It seems it's close, but he's holding his plus one is helping out. And there goes out a Disruptor. It picks off some of the Ravagers, really weeding out that Zerg army. The Colossus is just barely alive. It does fall. The Immortal that's still alive is putting a lot of damage out here, up to seven kills. That falls too, though, and it really is now just Blink Stalkers versus this army. The Disruptor was picked off. It isn't going to be there to get off another Nova. It really is just on these Stalkers. It's just Stalkers versus pretty much Ravagers at this point. No, I think Hurricane's going to hold. He's got to avoid the Cross of Files. He blinked offensively into a ton more Roaches, but there's actually no answer to this Void Ray here, and it seems that Hurricane has held this attack. What a game. Another Disruptor on the way here for Hurricane. He's He's, he's held on, he's able to breathe, I'm able to breathe, as uh, plus two starts, charge starts, more zealots on the way, double phoenix production actually is a really curious move, I guess uh, gonna try and capitalize on the fact that the zerg player just really lost all of his anti-air, I mean uh, it's just spores here. More mutas are getting made, or more phoenix are getting made, yeah there's the lack of anti-air could actually hurt impact a lot it's really curious that hurricane is going to make more of these phoenix goes up to six a nice number for harassment colossus on the way here for hurricane he's going to rebuild the backbone of that army too which is good to see he's getting up his fourth base i am really enjoying the play from hurricane today More Phoenix production on the way from Hurricane. Phoenix is going to lift up a Roach because they can. The plus two being on the way is really nice for the Protoss. Going to have an upgrade lead. This is where the Zerg, being a little bit worried, is going to go for harassment. But I mean, there's even cannons there which will slow down any potential harassment. I mean, these Phoenix could potentially just lift up the Queens. I think Hurricane could be more bold with these. He maybe expects Hydras or something else. But uh, I think he could be lifting up drones or... Or even these queens. There's only three queens here. He could very well go in and lift these up. It's only three queens. He could he could lift those up. He doesn't. It's just odd at this time in the game. He doesn't expect to have so much. I feel. Uh, stalkers blink into the roaches. The charge lots and stalkers will repel them. I think that was an okay trade. I think another blink to uh, pick off maybe one or two more. Uh, yeah, one dead. One more anyway. Uh, the Zerg army is just a lot of roaches and. Uh, Roaches and Lings. The Phoenix are still alive, and that oh, there's 13 more Mutas on the way here. 17 more Mutas on the way for for Impact, but Hurricane is really on top of this right now. He's just got up a good enough number of Phoenix. He's going to retreat with them. They're actually going to be a perfect counter here to these Mutas as long as he doesn't lose them. He loses one of them, but he's still got five Phoenix to take on the 17 Mutas, which is pretty good start to anti-air. He's going into carriers, which aren't very good, I feel, versus mutas, but there's still going to be enough. Now, uh, there's a, there's blink stalkers out as well. There's cannons and shield batteries going up. I feel like Hurricane is fine. Now, uh, him being out on the map with his phoenix is unfortunate, so he will be caught off guard by this a little bit. A little bit blindsided, but he's splitting up his army pretty damn well. And because of that, I think he should be fine here. He's almost maxed out. His force really is formidable. The mutas are coming on in, but there's stalkers, there's cannons, there's shield batteries. A fifth phase attempt does get cancelled here, but now uh, Hurricane knows about this. I wonder if he's going to go into Phoenix production behind this. He is. He has the fleet beacon too, so any impulse crystals wouldn't be too bad for him. Uh, the Zerg has gone into the natural base here with these mutas. The carriers are out. One of them does get focused down. That is a high value pickoff from the mutas. The 
Stalkers, though, still in pursuit. The third base now, though, under fire. 23 probes have fallen. So it looks like the multi-prong harassment from the Zerg is starting to pay off, being a big pain in the Protoss' uh, neck as the third base falls down. The Mutas are still in the sky. These Stalkers want to pursue them. Definitely blink after them. Carrier production resumes for Hurricane. He says, right, enough of that. Oh, uh, he doesn't actually have that much to repel these Mutas. The Protoss army really is the more formidable one at this point. If he goes for an attack, the Zerg could be tight-pressed to stop this. We could very well see a base trade counter, though. So, uh, Impact's gonna have to be very, very on his toes about what decision he makes. Same goes for Hurricane. 31 Banelings are on the way, so it looks like it's gonna be an attempt at a hold versus this army. I don't dislike it, because the Disruptor is tough to hit Banes with. There's Archons out, yes. But then, uh, there's also quite a bit of, uh, just quite a bit of Zerg with that Baneling addition. Banelings are morphing at the third base. Impact, Hurricane's retreating. I think he maybe could have pushed, pushed into a favorable fight. But yeah, we are taking a look here. These Banelings, where are they going? Are they going to crash into this base? Okay, they're going to kill off. Actually, these numbers, yeah, that's all right, trade. A fifth base attempt. Or a uh, fifth base location being harassed here. We'll see if Hurricane does actually start up a fifth base. For now, he's just going into carriers, which is really, really curious. It's forcing the Zerg into corruptors. Neither player, by the way, on a great economy. 52 probes for the Protoss, 67 drones for the Zerg. Archons frying up those lings. They do want to try and avoid the rest of the Zerg. And there is the rest of the Zerg. Hurricane, you gotta be careful with those Archons. Oh, they are gonna retreat. They could get wrapped around here. I mean, they're gonna take out a fair few of the Lings with them. That's pretty much a guarantee, but oh, they are getting picked off. They're actually absorbing a lot of Banelings here. One Banelings gonna make it to the mineral line, but most of it has been shut down. Massive disruptor shots go off. There's more Banelings heading towards the fourth base. Does Hurricane react? Yes, he does. It's the classic one-two punch, and he sniffed that out oh. very well. Oh, Lord. Research. We take a look here. The, uh, the Banelings are getting cleaned on up. Ten probes have gone down. That was a lot of the Zerg army being pushed away. If Hurricane could take a fight right now, he could definitely, I think, win the game. His stalkers are desperately trying to save the base. It looks like the Nexus will fall. It wasn't healed in time by that shield battery. However, so much of the Zerg has gone down. I think you simply have to push if you're Hurricane. Throw up a ton of cannons at your fourth base. Do what you gotta do. And then you just have to push and push and win the game right now. He's been trying to play the defensive game, but that only lasts so long. You do have to push into your opponent at some point. And uh, we take a look here. A mothership on the way. As uh, the Protoss players built up a very formidable army. I think uh, with the mother... Like, does he just park the mothership on top of his fourth or something? Ensure that his uh, base stays alive or whatever? Or does he bring it with the army? Does he keep it as an extra recall? It's tough to say. Either way, this Protoss player needs to take a fight now. Like, uh, things will quickly turn against him because his economy is not strong enough at this point. He wants to take the fight. Stalkers it on in pretty offensively. Only 19 Banelings. The problem is Hurricane's so scared right now. He is so scared. There is so many links here, but I mean, he's got Archons, he's got Carriers. He wants to take a fight and he's gonna do just that. The Banelings are going to have to try and tank for this. Force fields are going down, but the Archons are betraying him. The Stalkers blink underneath the Corruptors. They're trying to do what they can to save these carriers, and they are getting on top of a lot of them. And it looks like Hurricane is actually going to win with the Air Dominance, with the Golden Armada, and actually takes the 3-2. to two. The reverse 